Sorry about the delays. Can you hear me in the back there okay, uh, Mark? Are you here, so Mark? <laughs> Good, I leave. Um, so I'm here today to talk about the ARCH32 project. Uh, so I think we should call it ARCH, as in hard work, to get around uh, Mark's pronunciation problems. Um, so what is, what is uh, ARCH32? Um, well, RMVA comprises two uh, instruction set architectures, uh, ARCH32 and ARCH64. And individual implementations can choose to implement either ARCH32 or ARCH64 or both. Okay. Um, so I work for a company called Lenaro. Uh, and uh, anyone who's not familiar with Lenaro, uh, Lenaro is a, a not-for-profit organisation, uh, and its goal is to improve the state of Linux uh, on ARM devices. And uh, behind this is my name and job title. Uh, I'm a JVM engineer, and my personal goal is to improve the uh, state of Java on ARM devices. that uh, Lenora does is uh, it specifies a reference design for the development boards. And the, the goal is to provide uh, low-cost development boards to support development for uh, Arch32 and Arch64. There are two variants of the uh, board. Uh, there's a consumer edition and an enterprise edition. Uh, so the specification of the consumer edition is here. It's uh, an v 8 with a, a Arch, uh, oh, sorry, Arch64 and Arch. Uh, 32 instruction sets, uh, 8 core, uh, 853, um, this is okay. <laughs> 8 core, 853 uh, processor, 2 gigabytes memory, and that's available uh, for $99. And you can get uh, a reference to that if you go to the website, which is 96boards.org. The uh, Enterprise Edition, available really soon now, is a uh, 4 core. Um, uh, but it's a four-core out-of-order processor as opposed to the uh, one here, which is an in-order processor. Uh, up to 16 uh, gigabytes DDR, uh, and it's got SATA and uh, one gigabyte Ethernet. And the target price for is from $99. And um, so uh, this is a bit limited with two gigabytes of memory and without the SATA and Ethernet, so you may want to wait a bit. Uh, I would just like to point out that uh, Lenaro makes no money from the, the sale of these boards. So I'm not plugging the boards so that we sell our boards. Uh, they're ordered directly through this. Okay. So, um, actually, I'll look at this here. Um, so there's been a long history of Java development on ARM, um, starting in 97, 98. The time scale is a little we started with Java OS and that was based on data uh, called 1.1.3 uh, through to 1.1.8 and then we ported pjava on top of VX work that was based on 1.1.8 and then we started the project Giselle Hardware Acceleration to um, execute the uh, bytecodes directly in hardware and uh, that was a fun project to work on and it took about three years to get that uh, working um, and that was on a variety of technologies, uh, basically one of the eight. And we were also looking at J2ME, uh, CLDC, CBC, and those were based on the KVM and the CVM. Um, in 0607, that sort of time frame, I'm not sure exactly when, um, OpenJDK was opened. Uh, um, and then in 2009 2010, uh, I did a port. Uh, to do the JIT, a, a small fast JIT. Um, in 1316, uh, the AR64 port, and there's been numerous third party support as well, Janvian, Kakao, probably others. Despite all of this effort over well, almost 20 years, and 10 years since OpenJDK has been open source, we still have no open source port of Hotspot for ARM32. So that's what this project is going to address. Uh, at uh, Fulton last year, and at the end, uh, I proposed the idea of the project, and I asked for a volunteer to come forward to lead the project, and as, as is usual, nobody came forward, so I ended up doing it myself. 
So the goal of the project is to provide full feature support for JDK on the Linux Arch32 platform. Uh, and the Linux Arch32. And it, the port will be fully compatible with ARMv7. Okay, Arch32 is almost 100% compatible with uh, ARMv7. Uh, ARM claim 100% compatible, but it's strange my binaries from ARMv7 don't run on ARMv8. The, the problem is when they say 100% compatible, what they mean is 100% compatible with the non deprecated instructions. So the instructions that were deprecated in ARM v 7 are no longer in uh, ARM 32. But there are very few of those. They're basically um, the DMB, uh, ISP, and the cache portion instructions. So it's relatively trivial to get things working. Uh, the calls were broken about um, in November, November period. The result was approved was approved by four votes. Um, the minimum number required are these three votes, so um, the, that was one vote wasted. <laughs> Sadly, I, was, I, was, I wasn't, wasn't even allowed to vote for my own project uh, because I'm not, in, uh, I'm not an open JDK member. Um, so that's a hint to anybody who wants to nominate this matter, by the way. Um, no pressure. So the project was created on December the 7th and the initial upload of the JDK 8 new and JDK 9 3. And the project page is there, so you will be able to see the page. It is the, it's the obvious project page. <laughs> This project is not formally sponsored by the Lenaro, okay? But the Lenaro are allowing me to spend some of my spare time on this project. Uh, and they also allowed me to hire uh, uh, an intern for a period of three months uh, last year. So, uh, so um, yes, so I, I hired uh, the intern, and uh, his name is Joseph Joyce, and he worked with us for three months. <laughs> And initially, I set in, set in the goal that, well, in three months, it would be nice if we could get it to print out something that looks vaguely like um, uh, uh, a template interpreter, even if it doesn't run into the gap. In a typical way of interns, who, when they're um, not told that it was impossible to do on the time scale, they went ahead and implemented a template interpreter for months, which was good, and he's done a sterling job of that. Um, so that has been pushed now to the uh, Arch32 JDK9 tree, and it has also been backported by Azol Systems to the JDK8 tree. Uh, and I am delighted that uh, Azol, uh, anybody from Azol here? No? Okay, well, thank you very much, Azol. I would like to have them on board and delighted to have them helping with this project. Um, there are a number of design choices I just made when he was doing this. It based on the Arch64 project, uh, which was in turn based on the x 6 project. And he tried to minimize the, the changes as much as possible. There were a few changes. He made some changes to the, uh, the frame structure. And instead of having the frame pointer pointing to uh, itself, he had to point into the PC, and I, I quizzed on him on this, and it was apparently an attempt to get GDB to unwind the frames correctly. Um, sadly, it didn't work, so we might actually reverse that change so that the, the, the frames are consistent with this. Oh. Do you, want, do you want to go back to the first one so you can see them all? Or <laughs> shall I just continue and if there's anything? Uh, it's, it's a lot better than it was. <laughs> okay, at least I can talk to the slides now. Um, he, he also made the decision to use uh, the machine stack pointer as the expression stack pointer. Uh, on Arch64, uh, those two are separate, and it's uh, a lot easier to keep them separate. Um, particularly um, to make debugging a lot easier. When something goes wrong and you're using your uh, stack pointer as your expression stack pointer, but the reason you made that choice uh, against my recommendation and my path, uh, was because of the limited number of registers available on Arch at the and so 
here's a sample of the template, um, which uh, Joseph presented at the uh, Lunaro uh, Next conference in September of last year. It, it was rather unfortunate that he chose to present a template which had a bug in it. Okay, so, and anybody spot the bug? I'll give you a few seconds. Okay, well, this bug has occurred in, in right. every at the end that I've worked on. And uh, it is, in fact, a difference in the specification you can see for Java on what happens with the shift, uh, in particular with the shift values of both camera. Uh, Java, Java is part of the shift value from an aspect technique. The same happened in the R64 port, a uh, different variant of this that bug. Uh, in, on the R64, I believe it always masked it with 63, regardless of whether it's a long or hard. But you can feel better because nobody at the Connect conference supported this either. So, it's running, um, and we've got some benchmarks. For a benchmark, I've used uh, MC Grinder Benchmark 1.0. It's a very old benchmark, but I use it because I can run it in five minutes as opposed to something like MC. Uh, uh, I don't understand people who write benchmark tweets that take hours to run. It, it gives us a good idea of the relative performance of the legend. Okay. The blue bar is zero, the red bar is the template interpreter, and the yellow bar is the uh, ARM uh, assembler interpreter, which is, is part of the microgist. Okay, uh, and the, the basic overall um, average, uh, the, the last three bars here, can see, show the overall geometric mean, and you will see that the template interpreter is about 50% faster than zero, and the assembler interpreter is about 50% faster again. So, the question is why is the ARM assembler 50% faster than the template interpreter? Um, the template interpreter caches the top of stack uh, element in a register, uh, the ARM assembler uh, interpreter doesn't. Um, now, uh, I've found that that doesn't actually gain that much caching to talk about the rest. The biggest performance uh, of the interpreter, the byte interpreter, is with predicted branches. If you look at this sequence here, every single byte code that you get is a computer branch branching to a completely different destination every time, and it's mispredicted every time. So the ARM assembler interpreter gets around this by chaining up to four bytecodes uh, together as a single operation. So for example, I load, I load, I add, I store is done as a single template. And it does this by using a four level D dispatch table. So in the first level uh, of dispatch, if the bottom two bits are zero, uh, it's some sort of complex bytecode in bulk or something like that. So uh, it just executes as a single bytecode. Otherwise, if the bottom two bits are non-zero, it contains the length of that bytecode, so the dispatching code can go back and get the next bytecode. Uh, the dispatching code can get the next bytecode, and the remaining 30 bits of that point point to a second level dispatch table, and so on, and carry on to four levels. Then when you finally got the rest of the routine, you can jump to that routine and do all the four operations in a single instruction. So, why do you want to do this? You know, we've got the JIT. Well, having a faster interpreter benefits the JIT because you don't have as much pressure to compile methods if you have a faster interpreter. Possibly in future include this in OpenJDK. Maybe I think it would be quite a big thing to get into OpenJDK. Um, and certainly for the uh, R32 port, we're going to stick with the template interpreter. Okay, but it's an idea for the future, an interesting project. Maybe but I've got lots of interesting projects in it. So, some comparisons then with the uh, ARM microchip. Uh, so, we can see typically the microchip gets uh, about five times the performance of the assembler interpreter. And this looks quite good until we go to the next slide. Where we put in, and this is a question you asked me in the presentation last year. What is the comparison against the microchip? 
And here we see that suddenly we have rather a steep hill to climb to conduct this performance. So this is really why uh, I have made the decision not to continue with the other one. It cannot uh, ever get anywhere close uh, to that. And the main reason is, is because of some of the, of the design choices that were made in the microjust. Uh, in particular, I decided to have the uh, exact same frame pointer frame structure uh, as in the uh, zero interpreter and this uh, made it uh, much easier in many ways because uh, the task of de-optimization was a, a null task because it was using exactly the same frame structure. Unfortunately the, the frame has got 11 words or something like that so it means every time you call a method you have to create an 11 word, word uh, long frame. Um, coupled with the fact that it doesn't do inlining uh, it gives a huge so I think the best thing to do is uh, call it end of line for the microjust and continue to focus on the uh, Sorry, I didn't. Yes, you're missing the legend. So uh, with the same tree as before, green is the ARM microjust. Okay, so it, it's the the JIT I wrote for ARM32. It's a, a small, quick to compile, slow execution JIT. Uh, the red is then the uh, Oracle 8U65 client, and blue is uh, Oracle 8U65 server. This is this is this is it's, it's the Oracle binary because it because it's ARM32. So there's no yeah. <laughs> If you want to make it open source, <laughs> really, that, that would really be very nice. Yeah. I know it's not your decision, but if, if you did have any influence, there, and, and, and George can be, he's not here. <laughs> okay. So, um, what's this current status? Well, the template and character is is, is quite good state. It run, runs quite a wide range of programs: Java, C, Eclipse, um, something else. That's on the right hand side. Importantly, it looks up to the well, it's a good start for a compiler. And I've run it through JPEG, and uh, it's very good to see. And we get a few more failures on Hotspot. They're not really relevant because Hotspot um, tests and make assumptions about the presence of C1 and C2. Most of the errors here are just due to time. It's been so slow to test. But the good thing, which you can't see over here, is online going to have to investigate that. So what needs to be done? Um, well, it was written in three months by an intern. It's in the stream of consciousness, so it needs a, a good cleanup. <coughs> um, the mapper assembler needs to be fleshed out fully with all the ARM instructions. Support for Tonto, that's a question. Uh, at the moment, it generates the old uh, ARM, 32 bit ARM instructions. Uh, should we uh, go for Tonto um, to be debated? Support for ARM v6, so the major motivation for ARM v6, I think, is rather implied. I don't intend to look at this, so unless someone can put it in the community and then it's not going to do this, but that won't get done. Testing and bug fixing, and then two simple items here, implement C1 and implement C2. And I have started looking at implementing C2, and, and I've created a stubbed out R42.ad, which builds, uh, but uh, falls over straight away, uh, as expected. Um, we have some... Uh, I promise with some help in from the decision from uh, one of our partners uh, I, I wanted to mention who because it's his uh, Hopefully uh, over the next year we can see uh, a lot of progress on the So the final thing is, is a call for help. Okay, this is a community driven project. Uh, I am doing this uh, as a part time effort within the NARO. Um, without the community involvement it's not going to happen. So please Join the mailing list and uh, get involved, and uh, the address of the public page uh, is, is there. Thank you. Any questions?